basically our government tak ada banyak sangat duit eh. So that's why you all contract sekarang ni. Okay and then I'm not sure lah how how they gonna absorb all of you by the end of the two years ni. Tapi some yang slacking definitely will not be retained. Okay. Especially kalau yang pernah extended, yang pernah ada attitude problem. And I already extended a houseman yang contract ni. Okay. And already a houseman already quit in my department. Okay. So this is not something yang you boleh take lightly lah. Okay. So basically the assessment tool sekarang. So this is more objective lah ya. Workplace based assessment. So either case based discussion. It's more like a long case lah. Eh? And then a mini clinical evaluation exercise. It's a mini CX. More like a short case. Multi-source feedback ni, feedback from your HOD, from your specialist, from your colleague, from your uh, matron ke ataupun uh, sister. Okay, and also MCQ juga. Aside from that, you are expected to be performing uh, some procedures. So, procedure yang you perform tu is simple je. Just branula, insertion, uh, vena puncture, uh, ECG, blood CNS, ABG. Okay, and then assisted tu is like macam maybe plural tapping, peritoneal tapping, uh, maybe lamba puncture, and observe is more like uh, BMAT ke femoral catheter insertion, central line insertion. Okay, benda tu kita tak expect from you lah. But if you want to, willing to try pun with observation pun boleh juga. I have no problem. Okay, so, ah uh, so okay, when you ma masuk, when you daftar dekat your hospital kan, soon, so most of you lah, I, I, I say two third of you will go into medical department. I think most of them will put you in medical department dulu. Okay. So medical department, when you started your housemanship, you akan normally the tagging period is two weeks. Okay. Two weeks minimum for the first poster. Eh? Two weeks minimum. Okay. And after that, you are the MCQ, your CBD and also your mini CEX lah. Okay. So... Uh, how do I want to know whether you're qualified to off tag or not? Okay, so two weeks of tagging, kita ada Viva. Okay, so Viva, this is a very simple uh, session lah. So basically, yang I tanya tu is basic medical condition. Macam, when, okay, basically, kalau you tagging, you tak, you tak boleh buat on call. That, that's meaning, kalau you tagging, you just tagging lah. Ha, you can have someone with you. Kalau you dah off tag, meaning that you can work in the ward alone. Okay. So when you work in the ward alone, so expectation is higher. Okay, especially when you're on call. Because the specialist will not be there. Your MO may sometimes may be there, sometimes somewhere else dekat emergency ke, taking referrals ke. So you may be the only person in the ward. That's why bila you off tech, you have to know these basic common scenarios, how you want to manage it. Okay, contoh yang question I always ask about hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, hyper-K, hypo-K, fitting chest pain, SOB. Okay, so for example, kalau Viva akan tanya, so uh, the staff nurse inform you, potassium 6.0, okay, because, and you're the only person in the ward. So, what you want to do? Any takers? Hyper K, potassium 6. How would you approach this? I think this is easy medical student question. Uh, okay, you want an ECG. So what are you looking for in the ECG? Hmm? Tall tented T lagi? Okay, ST depression. Okay. Can get prolonged QRS lagi? Bradycardia. Bradycardia is common in hyper -key, especially in SRF patient. Okay, don't ever forget that. Okay. So, kalau okay, so you dapat ECG. ECG dia normal sinus rhythm. No... Uh, hyper K punya changes lah. So after that, how would you approach it, the patient? Okay, this is, okay, this is soalan off tech lah ni. So this is soalan off tech. So how would you approach the patient? Dekat situ tulis it's not a live sample lah. So what you want to do? After you dah buat ECG then? You don't know ke? Anybody else? Ada siapa-siapa yang tahu? Okay. If you answer like this in your Viva, definitely you're going to be extended. Lah. Okay. And no doubt about that. Okay. So I, I don't know if you're shy or you're malu or you're not depend on orang lain jawab. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Lah. Okay. So basically, let's say, kalau you dapat ni, so what you want to give? So have you ever heard of lighted cocktail? 
Okay, so what consists of lactic oxalate? Calcium gluconate lagi? Insulin lagi? Apa lagi saya tak, tak dengar? Anybody? I think mumbling, mumbling tapi I tak dapat dengar. Another, okay, another one I was what? Okay, dextrose. Okay, so which one of the three yang you akan bagi dulu? Calcium gluconate. Okay, so why you give calcium gluconate first? Okay, I, I, I nak fokus kat siapa pun, I tak tahu. So, anybody yang willing to stand up and jawab boleh tak? Doesn't matter if you're right or wrong because now you're not working lah. So, it's acceptable. Okay, so you bagi calcium gluconate dulu. Why you give calcium gluconate? I will always does. Does, does it, does it uh, bring down the potassium? No. So, but what, what does it do? It protects the heart from any arrhythmia. So that's the most important thing for you to do first lah. Bukannya, it doesn't bring the potassium. The potassium will always be six kalau you bagi calcium gluconate pun. But it just protect the heart. Okay? And then you give uh, insulin or D50? Okay, insulin or D50? Anybody? Okay, kalau tak ada siapa nanya, I'm going to ask from left to right or siapa-siapa. Okay, started from you. Dextrose dulu. And then your justification to give dextrose? Okay, good. But the, 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 the dextrose, does it uh, bring down the insulin? Eh, sorry, the bring down the potassium? Yes, okay. So that's very good answer. Yeah? So basically, you give D50 because you bagi insulin. Tapi you kena check dia punya sugar dulu. Kalau dia punya sugar dah belas-belas ke dia punya sugar dah memang 20 something, there's no point of you giving D50 yang banyak. Okay? Uh, kalau you uh, bagi insulin dulu, so patient akan hypo. Uh, that's why, walaupun ins the only reason yang you bagi insulin, because in the insulin yang bring down the potassium, not the D50. So the D50 is just to back up untuk menggalakkan patient daripada hypo. So you need to understand this. Why you giving this? Why you give? Why you giving this? Jangan you cakap just rehearse answer and then cakap just semua tanpa knowing why you giving this. Okay? Uh, and then dengue juga lah. Dengue is an important thing, eh, especially in Malaysia. So every viper memang akan tanya pasal dengue cases, compensated, decompensated cases. Okay. So before you off tech, memang you kena pass you punya ni lah. Okay. Kalau you tak dua minggu, kalau you tak lepas you punya the first viper. You gonna take another one week, and then with the reassessment of viva, okay, before the end of the third week. Maximum tagging period is one month. Okay, kalau you tak lepas off tag within one month, you gonna extension automatically. Okay, that's that's how it is lah. Viva and then MCQ. Okay, let's say if you dah habis you punya viva and then you working as normal. Uh, after two months will be your MCQ. It's a 50 question, best of five. Okay, tak ada negative marking. Question the based on the medical topic lah yang akan ada dekat you punya logbook. And then kalau you tak successful pun, you kena repeat juga. This, I think maximum repeat is about three attempts for MCQ. Okay, next one is uh, case-based discussion. Okay, case-based discussion is a long case. So this one uh, is actually expectation is high on this one, eh? Okay, because I cakap dengan my houseman, kalau you nak buat uh, CBD, you choose your topic, okay? Whatever that you're comfortable with lah yang ada dalam curriculum. Let's say kalau you uh, comfortable dengan chest pain ke ACS ke, okay, fine. You you pick that topic and then preferably uh, patient yang you dah pernah manage, okay? And then how? And then dari situ kita nak tengok you punya history, you punya basic examination, and then you punya working diagnosis, you punya management so on and so forth lah, okay? So macam saya cakap, because you choose the case, so you should know in and out what your patient. So kalau I pusing pusing sikit pun, you should be able to answer lah because the topic tu memang yang you yang pilih, eh? so expectation is high. And then CBD ni normally the 15 to 20 minutes ah, okay. And then apa yang I interested is uh, assessment of the patient, diagnosis, decision making, also ethics. Kalau I feel can you based on the principle of the unsafe doctor, unable to manage common medical condition. Dia ada grade A, B, and C. Kalau grade C, you're deemed to fail and must come back for another assessment. Ma maximum pun three assessment juga for CBD. Okay, contoh untuk CBD is macam I cakap, let's say. 
Kalau patient dengan chest pain, you you you, you uh, ambil patient yang stable in China lah, which is quite common in the ward. Okay, and then you kena clock lah dia punya history from the beginning, so macam mana dia datang, so apa presentation dia, dia punya Socrates semua, so risk factor, past medical history, all and all tu macam medical student punya history. Lepas tu basic examination. So in patient in MI, Okay, so you apa yang you nak examine apa yang you interested in? Okay, heart examination. So what else? Okay, you maybe you wanna listen to the lung couple. So all that findings you bagi tahu lah. Okay, so from there, uh, what are the relevant investigation yang you nak order for this patient? Okay, so all the uh, routine bloods. Kalau you kata routine bloods, what do you mean by routine bloods? Apa you nak? Kalau you nak FBC, what you looking for the FBC? You nak RP, what are you looking for? You nak uh, cardiac enzyme, what you looking for? Okay, ECG, what you're interested to look at? Okay, and then uh, what else? Kalau upon discharge, what else you want to do with this patient lah? Okay, so I think this one, most of my houseman tak ada masalah lah because they have time to prepare and then I expect high juga lah. Tapi I think most of them delivered lah in the CBD punya ni. Okay, this is the example of uh, CBD punya assessment punya ni eh. So, number, actually dia sampai tiga je sebenarnya. You're allowed to nak sampai tiga je. Okay, uh, history taking, examination, diagnosis, management and also documentation. So focus on the clinical encounter. Documentation, I tak ni sangat lah dekat sini. It's more like clinical assessment, management, also your professionalism lah. Okay, uh, most of them will get good or satisfactory lah. I think jarang yang I bagi poor for this because I think most of them are well prepared. Okay, after that is the mini CX. Okay, mini CX is a short case. It's an examination. Uh, the specialist will choose for you lah. Okay, sama ada you pernah manage this patient ataupun you tak pernah manage this patient. They will choose for you. For example, patient, uh, contohnya pleural effusion. Okay, so I cakap dengan you, this patient presented with uh, shortness of breath. Okay, please examine his respiratory examination. Okay, so yang sebelah ni, okay, so what you want to do? I ask you to examine respiratory system. Ah. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, so basically you always uh, tengok patient from afar dulu eh. You tengok keadaan new patient ni macam mana, tachypneic or not tachypneic. Lepas tu you tengok dia ada oksigen ke dia tak ada oksigen. Lepas tu you tengok dia punya body habitus dia macam mana. Okay, nampak very kekaktik ke, nampak normal body habitus ke. Lepas tu you tengok ada sputum pot by the bedside. It's all about showmanship tau. It's all about benda ni macam examination. Sometimes benda tu tak ada tapi you nak tunjukkan yang kat examiner you yang you tahu benda tu you patut looking for that. ah uh, The relevant negative. Okay. Always examination ni, it's always about showmanship. Okay, sometimes you memang rasa dia tak ada, tapi you just tunjukkan that you looking for that kind of things. Okay, so and then always start from periphery. Okay, at your level start from periphery. Okay, Be, you tengok dekat tangan, you tengok for clubbing, you tengok for nicotine stain, you tengok for any flapping tremors. Lepas tu house dia punya pulse. Okay, lepas tu working there, lepas tu you assess dia punya limb nodes, lepas tu you tengok dia punya trachea, lepas tu anterior chest, posterior chest. Started by uh, inspection, any scars, any previous chest tube insertion ke maybe kalau uh, any previous markers of uh, possible tapping ke maybe okay, lepas tu lung expansion dia macam mana okay, all of that, orang selalunya yang perasan, houseman dia selalu always jump to auscultation dia just tengok that and then jump to auscultation but that's not the way it is lah because sometimes dekat round I memang buat macam tu personally I mengaku I memang buat macam tu but because I don't have time to do everything Okay, tapi untuk your level, you have to one by one, sequence one by one, you're gonna buat benda ni. Okay, and then kalau you punya findings, sometimes yang benda ni, I tak interested sangat the diagnosis lah, tapi I nak tahu macam mana you come to the diagnosis. Kalau you kata, okay, uh, katakanlah kalau you kata pleural effusion, pleural effusion is not actually a diagnosis, it's just a the condition. So what, 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 what causing the pleural effusion? Okay, so what else do you want to order? What else do you want to investigate? Yeah, not to confirm the pleural effusion. Okay? So, uh, you, sorry you. Okay, so kalau patient ni pleural effusion, what test would you want to do? You suspect pleural effusion. So what, what, what test would you order? 
Okay, you want to check, uh, you will order, order chest X-ray lah. Okay, so what else? Ultrasound. Ultrasound is not the first line lah. Not the first line. Uh. Ultrasound should be lower, lower, lower lagi. Okay, that's what imaging dulu chest X-ray. So what else? Investigation yang you boleh order? Okay, you can order your blood. Okay, so blood, blood, is blood. Apa yang you interested in? Okay, so you order your full blood count. So in the full blood count, apa yang you nak tengok? Okay, so your white blood cell. Okay, you nak tengok ada infection. You want to tengok the HB. You nak tengok the patient anemic, any chronic cause of the anemia. Okay, you want to see the platelet, you nak tengok any evidence of any thrombocytopenia, probably due to a sepsis maybe. Okay, and then you can order any uh, the ni lah, uh, renal profile, the liver function test, LDH, you nak tengok. And also you will order, a, uh, so you will do a plural tapping. So in the plural tapping, what are you interested in? Huh? Lights criteria, okay. Lights criteria is very important. Yeah, I always ask my husband. So, what is lights criteria? Okay, so you know, it's exudative or transudative. So, kalau exudative, there's a list of differential. Transudative, there's a list of differential juga lah. Then you can narrow down your diagnosis lah. But ultimately, after dah buat semua tu, kalau perlu, you akan order CT, ultrasound tu. Usually, I tak buat lah. Unless kalau I, it's a very massive effusion yang I nak order for a pigtail. Ah, uh, yang tu baru I buat ultrasound. Ataupun I'm not really sure whether it's a just an effusion or it's a collapse consolidation with an infusion juga boleh boleh, boleh confirmkan dengan ultrasound. Okay, because sometimes you think of from the X-ray nampak macam effusion, tapi kalau it's a massive effusion, kalau you PK dia punya trachea mesti akan deviated kan. And then tapi tu trachea dia lurus je, tapi it's a massive effusion. So is there something else there? Is there ada collapse ke any mask there ke yang you pun tak sure. Tapi lungs you rasa macam Dull, not really stony dull. Uh. So you can do ultrasound lah to confirm whether it's just an effusion or something else. Okay. Uh, okay, your mini CEX is basically macam ni je lah. History taking, examination, clinical judgment, management, also communication skill. So passing is uh, grade A and also grade B. Uh, poor is grade C lah. So this focus ni more about you punya history, I rasa dekat sini tak important sangat. So what I want to know is your technique, examination technique, whether you use a proper technique or not. And then whether your alert, whether what are you supposed to find, what you're supposed to elicit. And then by eliciting whatever the sign yang you ada tu, how, come, how do you find to your diagnosis? Okay, because sometimes you dah okay you dah tahu benda ni macam uh, pleural effusion macam saya cakap lah tapi you, you know pleural effusion banyak cause dia is it because of failure is it because of tb is it because of malignancy is it because of inflammatory disorder uh, so benda tu actually is a good thinking process lah yang i nak tahu jugaklah okay so i think this is all about uh, houseman punya assessment lah from medical punya point of view i think this is all the objective assessment okay tapi more importantly even though kalau you lepas semua ni okay i will still be assessing you punya attitude eh you punya professionalism macam saya cakap kalau based on knowledge you kalau i nak extend you um, after the third month i dah kena bagi notice lah okay so that you can improve within the last month tapi kalau you knowledge you okay but attitude you poor let's like say you datang kerja lambat Ataupun you irresponsible, you tak siapkan you punya kerja, you mengelak you punya kerja, you always pass over you punya kerja. Uh, benda tu I can, at the very last minute, even the your last day, I can always extend you. Attitude is something that is not compromisable. Okay? Kalau I rasa you not fit to leave my department, you won't leave my department. Okay, I'm very strict of that. Because I want to produce a safe doctor. Eh? I bukannya, if anything yang I school my house officer, It's nothing personal against you. I I'm not really I tak kisah as long as kalau you buat you punya kerja, 
you're, you're responsible to your patient, you have accountability to your patient, you have the ownership to, to your patient. Okay, kalau you buat semua tu and then you are self-plotter, walaupun you punya knowledge macam biasa-biasa je, I will let you go. But even though kalau you rasa you pandai, you can memorize everything, but you selalu datang kerja lambat, you selalu balik awal, post call you tak siapkan you punya kerja. Okay, I think that later on you will be, uh, cause a headache to my department ataupun the other department. So kalau I rasa I deem you unfit or unsafe doctor, I will extend you. Okay, and then bear in mind because you are contracted doctor. So, any extension will have an impact in your career. Sama ada you will be absorbed into the punya later on ke tak. Okay? Uh, that, that's yang you, your batch ni kena careful lah. Okay? Because yang earlier batch tu, because diorang memang, dah ma diorang memang tak ada contract kan. As in macam memang akan confirm. Tapi for you to get confirmation, benda-benda ni diorang akan tengok. Because like I said, government tak dapat absorb semua orang. So how they want to screen this? Okay, based on this lah, benda-benda yang macam ni. Uh, so they will screen you guys. Uh, any other question? Mena tanya? Okay. So tak ada question eh? Okay. So lastly, uh, for me lah, because because I think what like, oh, last week, last week I have one house officer two months in my posting quit the department saying that the saying that he's incapable he eh, he is incapable he is not fit he's not interested to do medicine okay he have other alternative okay and then he doesn't even have the courage to come and say to my face they hanya just message my mo and then just hantar 24 hour notice well, i think that's a bad attitude lah okay kalau you dah work your way lima tahun in medical school and then you cannot endure what the hospital is throwing at you in two years i don't i, I don't know lah how how what you want to be lah okay because you are throwing away your life five years okay and then housemanship is not easy terus terang cakap it's not easy it's difficult it's tiring it's troublesome okay but it will get better Okay, this is not train you early on supaya you dah bukanlah nak bukan nak bagi you susah supaya you tahu how it feels. Okay, because sometimes bila you at the you bila when you are pushed to the limit baru you rasa you punya potential, baru you nampak you punya potential, baru you know that you can go that far. Kalau you asyik senang-senang je, normally you akan ni lah tak dapat tak dapat pergi jauh. Okay, so best of luck to all of you. Okay, if you ended up in hospital segamat, you will see me. Okay.